Just because you are regularly putting money into your employer plan at work doesn't mean that you're going to reach your goals. Oftentimes, by just putting funds into your retirement plan at work, you might be missing out on some really great opportunities. Even though you're investing consistently, which is great, but you might not be taking advantage of all of the different opportunities to create even more possibilities in your life. I'm Amber Knips, a wealth advisor at Sweet Financial Partners located in Fairmont and Jackson, Minnesota. And I specialize in working with high net worth individuals as they help plan through all phases of life and help them plan for their future. Having a strategic plan is crucial for making sure that you're on track. So oftentimes just being on autopilot for years could really hurt your long-term success. So in addition to being a wealth advisor, I'm a baker. I love spending time in the kitchen with my kids, making lots of memories. And for years, I had this chocolate chip cookie recipe that it worked, right? Chocolate chip cookies or chocolate chip cookies. Wrong. And one day I made this recipe for a friend. She's a baker. So that was my first mistake. And I shared it with her and she said, Amber, you know, if you just swapped out all of the butter and did butter and margarine instead, it's going to make a world of difference. I'm like, okay, made a note next time I made the cookies, did that swap. Unbelievable. You know, that perfect cookie that's a little bit crispy, a little bit chewy. That was it. So one small swap made a huge difference in my cookies. And think of that from your retirement savings. A couple small swaps or maybe one small swap, depending on what you're doing, can make a really big difference in your long-term success if you're being intentional. So you might not intentionally be doing something wrong, but you can be missing out on something that could be making a big difference. And that's why sometimes it makes sense to enlist the help of a professional to help think, take things up a notch. So today I want to go through the eight mistakes that I commonly see people making so that you know, what could I possibly changing to make things even better? So just like my mediocre cookies, how to take it up a notch. And if you're looking for a great resource on creating even more possibilities in your life, I would encourage you to click the link below and get a free copy of our book, Dream Architecture. It goes through some really great ways to help build a retirement beyond what's even possible. And I know time is really precious. We're all very busy. It's a valuable commodity. So it's a great quick read to help make sure you're on the right path and some tips to implement today. So the first common mistake I want to go through is not having an adequate emergency savings account. And you're probably wondering, well, what does that have to do with investing? But it's actually a really important first step to make sure that if something unexpected does happen, you're not forced into making a decision that's maybe not the best for you. So, you know, ideally, I like to say three to six months worth of living expenses kind of tucked away safely in case something were to happen. Maybe you lose your job or you have a big car repair that you need to take care of that at least gives you the opportunity to have something to fall back on so you don't have to rack up a credit card and pay a ton of interest or worse, withdraw from your investment accounts. And that amount needed can vary for everyone. So if you're someone who gets paid on commissions or maybe income tends to be a little bit more variable, I would recommend maybe more like the six to nine months of expenses just to make sure you're adequately covered if you have a little bit more risk with your income. And same with if there's something maybe coming up that you're kind of expecting or unexpected, you know, think of your car's clunking a little bit more than usual. It might be a good time to work on building up that saving so that you're prepared kind of when something happens. And, you know, also if you're looking at a car, maybe that's a great down payment fund. So you don't have to say, gosh, I can't do some of those things that I really need to do. So one of the first things that when I work with clients, I like to help them through is preparing for those what ifs. So oftentimes it might mean that emergency fund and building that up, but it's also how to handle some of those big situations too. You know, who's the te first team members you go to or the first really important people in your life to go through to help you make some of those really good decisions, you know, in a really bad situation. And, you know, really not being forced to make a decision that can affect that long-term success. Because if you have to draw from especially a retirement account, 
you know, you can trigger significant taxes, penalties, and it might take years for you to make that money back. So what's really important to me is having my clients having options and not feeling like they have to make a certain decision. So the second one I want to go through is not investing enough in your 20s and your 30s. And in the early years of your career, cash flow might be tight and it might be hard and challenging to find some of those extra funds to be able to save. But I hate to break it to you. You're never going to wake up one day and be like, oh, goodness, I finally have all this extra money to invest because there's always going to be things that pop up. There's always going to be ways that we can spend our extra funds, whether it be something fun or maybe some different upgrades. So thinking about what you can do differently instead of keeping those funds in that account, because then chances are they'll get spent. So think of it as being intentional, intentional to make it a non-negotiable from the start, setting up that auto draft right from your account so the money gets tucked and you don't even see it. So just like you tell yourself, I'm not going to snack anymore. I'm not eating that junk food. It's all apples and vegetables from here. Well, as long as you keep buying it, you're going to keep eating it. So you need to clear the cupboards completely to start fresh and think of it just like that with your investments. Being intentional, intentional about saving and setting that up, up that sweep, then it's going to be a habit and that's fabulous. And the sooner that you can start saving, the sooner you'll see that gratification and seeing that grow. So having that emergency fund built up is a fabulous first place to start. Then you can say, well, what's next? And sitting down with an advisor and saying, well, I have an adequate savings. Now what's the best place to save from here? And really thinking of more about that longer term bucket or some of those important goals that you want to reach and having the ability to use compounding to help you reach those goals. So something that people don't realize a lot is being young, you have a really important tool and thing on your side of compound interest. So that's compounding is the ability to, of an asset to generate earnings that keep getting reinvested and then keep creating additional earnings. So it's, it's kind of like when you hear people say, having your money work harder for you. So it's crucial to change that mindset from, oh, I really want that new nice phone or that nice new car. But instead of looking at it as every dollar you put away now is giving you even more possibilities down the road. So what are you saying yes to now? That means you're saying no to down the road. So the third one is not increasing your maximum retirement contributions over time. And this is a big one and it's really underutilized. Oftentimes we see people enroll into their, their employer plan, maybe a 401k, a 403b, they set to just contribute the max and never increase it from there. And what happens is that amount's going to stay until you change it. It doesn't usually automatically increase. And we know things get more and more expensive over time. So how come you're not increasing that contribution percentage? So a really good rule of thumb that I like to use is saying you get a raise every year, put as much of that, if not all of it, into your 401k plan. So increase that percentage by the amount of your raise because you didn't have it before, you won't miss it when it's gone. So it's very common for the IRS to actually increase the percentages that we can put into our 401k plans every year. And we saw a pretty substantial increase for 2023. So the new limits will be 22,500, which is a $2,000 increase from last year, which is fabulous. And if you're one of those lucky people who are 50 and over, you actually get to put an extra $7,500 in, which is great. So that extra catch-up contribution can make a big difference too over time. So when we're looking at you know, what kind of opportunities there are, that's a really great place to start. And especially if you have a Roth 401k or 403b option, that's a really great place to save too. So raise your hand if you're one of those people who tends to be pessimistic on taxes moving forward. I know I am. So looking at the Roth, that's a great way to pay the taxes now and get the funds into a space where then they grow tax-free. So, you know, depending on income, all of that can make a difference. 
but being able to save in a different type of a place is really important. So you can get a really nice amount of money tucked into that different kind of space. And if income allows and you're allowable within the limits, you can actually make a Roth IRA contribution as well, which creates even more possibilities. So that's something we're constantly looking at for our clients is how to be the most tax efficient and also where to make sure you're saving in the best places to make sure that it's making the biggest impact over time. You know, I have so many clients who saved only pre-tax and now they're trying to fight and convert as much as they can to get those taxes paid because they know it's only going to continue to be an issue down the road. So number four, believing that owning more than just a few securities means you're properly diversified. So there's been a lot of talk lately with good reason about the importance of building a developing a recession-proof portfolio, you know, being properly diversified to weather the storm. And you're probably like, what does that even mean? How do I know if that includes me? Because just purchasing a few different stocks or mutual funds doesn't necessarily mean you're diversified, especially if they all move in the same direction, you know, from a general perspective. So we like to structure things so that they all move a little bit differently and react a little bit differently to the markets. So if something pops up and you happen to need money and the markets are volatile, it doesn't mean that you're selling and being forced to sell something that you'd rather not to. So having a diversified portfolio means that some years, some of the funds will be really, really good. And some years they might lag a little bit, but that's okay because they all have a little bit different of a purpose. So in heightened volatility, some of those funds that tend to lag, you know, during the really good years are going to be your winners in the years that are a little bit more volatile, kind of like we're seeing right now. So having those different places to tap into so you're not being forced to sell something is really, really important. Number five, trying to constantly time the market because really timing the market's impossible. No human or no specific algorithm can you know, perfectly pick everything and pick the winners based on short-term swings you know, over that long-term time horizon. So I would strongly recommend against that and trying to do that because what happens is you're likely going to miss opportunities, you know, down the road and have some regrets too. You know, attempting to time the market could trigger some trading fees, potentially taxes, and just take a toll on your mental health because it can be a roller coaster of emotions watching the market and beating yourself up if you made a bad call or you missed an opportunity. You know, instead, we really like the strategy of gradually buying in over time because it allows you to buy in at the lower points, but without having to feel like you have to be perfect and perfectly timing everything. Because from a long-term perspective, buying at the lower points will prove valuable despite not perfectly reaching the bottom of the market. And number six, taking advice from family and friends. And maybe more importantly, making financial decisions from things you read on the internet or see on the news. Because what I always remind my clients is that unfortunately, what sells and gets more clicks is the negative stuff. You know, think of the last time you turned on the news and you had this heartwarming, you know, wonderful story about a long lost puppy who finally found his way home and was reunited with his family. You know, we love those, but they don't play those. You might see them here and there, but they're few and far between. Instead, we're inundated with recession, you know, recession news, interest rates, elections, global warming, all of the things. But really, they're a far cry from being heartwarming stories. So if you're using, you know, things like that to help make your investment decisions, or maybe the guy who hangs out at the water cooler all day, your main investment, you know, guides might make you feel uncertain. Friends and family might have the best intentions, but you don't know where they're getting their information and sourcing that from either. So that's why working with someone who's specialized to help you sift through all the things and help you construct a portfolio that's specifically aligned with you and your goals is really, really important. So it's human nature to want to imitate the behaviors of all the people we view as successful, but it's important to realize that success is not determined by somebody else's success. It's only what works for you. And everybody has a different view of success. So trying to chase and use somebody else's view might not work for you in the end. 
and it might keep you up at night because it doesn't match your comfort level. And number seven, not implementing asset location allocations. So we talked about diversification, the importance of, you know, really having things kind of diversified all across the board. Well, taking it a step further and looking at something, you know, and saying what types of accounts are you properly diversified in the different types of accounts? Because not all accounts are taxed in the same way. You know, some are taxed at your tax bracket, some are capital gains, some grow tax-free, and making sure you're utilizing all of those in some sort of way. You know, especially since future tax rates are uncertain, it's really important to look and say, let's have a, a variety of different types of funds. And especially if you want to retire early so that you have the best chance for long-term success. So opening those accounts sooner than later so you can be funding them differently because they all might have a little bit different of a goal. Because this can really seem overwhelming. There's Roth IRAs, there's 529s, there's college accounts, HSAs, brokerage accounts, IRAs, Roth IRAs, and the list goes on. So it's it can be really hard to know where to save first. And you know, I like to use a good rule of thumb is emergency savings first because that helps get you the most flexibility if something were to happen. And then look at saving within your employer plans to make sure you're for sure getting that match. You know, that's crucial. And then from there, looking and saying, well, let's max out an HSA, potentially a Roth IRA. And then depending on your different savings goals, a brokerage account can offer you a great place to save for different types of life events and goals throughout your working years. You know, those funds are a lot more accessible, which can be a really, really good thing too. So there's a strategic way to utilize all these different accounts and enlisting that help from someone, you know, a great trusted advisor can help you determine what makes the most sense for you and your circumstances. And the last one, and probably one of the most important too, is comparing yourselves to others. Don't make that mistake. And this is something that comes up a lot. And it's something that people are always curious about is, how much should I have saved, you know, because I'm X years old? And, you know, a quick Google search, you can find out, you know, 15 different articles that say you should have X amount of money saved. But there's so many issues with that. And the biggest is they don't take into account you. They don't know you. They don't know your goals and your spending habits and, you know, what you want to do in retirement. So, you know, looking at that and saying, okay, well, here's my baseline. I, you know, I'm on track or I'm not on track. If you're just using that, you could be missing out on some really important things in retirement because you might have bigger goals. So what I don't ever want is for you to sit and say, well, I didn't get to do some of the things that I'd been dreaming about and hoping for and wanting to accomplish just because you didn't create that strategic plan. Using other people's success to dis dictate your happiness is a recipe for disaster. So don't let that be the pursuant of your main driver of overall success because we're all different and that's okay. And don't beat yourself up because you don't think you saved as much as somebody else because spoiler alert, oftentimes things are not always at they, as they seem. So maybe your coworker always talks about the hot stocks that they bought and all of the money that they made, but they failed to leave out all the losers and the money that they've lost too. So the only person that can define your success is you. And working with an advisor is a great way to help narrow down what does success mean for you and then figuring out how are you going to get there for your specific circumstances, your cash flow, and everything that's important to you. And that's really why we utilize the dream architect process is to look at the big picture on everything as it relates to you, your risk tolerance, your assets and then calculate what you need to be doing to help it, help you reach your goals and stay on track and not leaving it to chance. So the biggest takeaway is that time is on your side. A couple small changes today can make a big difference in the long run. And it might seem like a lot to bite off right now, but do it in baby steps, enlist the help of someone, and they'll help make sure that you're on track and utilizing time. And if you're feeling inspired and you wanna dig even deeper, click on the link below to check out my video, The Biggest Retirement Mistake to Avoid, where I go into a little bit more detail on some of the tax pieces that I mentioned in this video. 
So lots of great advice to help you create the life you can't wait to wake up to.